Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we are looking at some more Three Kingdoms stuff. So uh, there's a there's a big thing with unlocking units in this game. Um, there's some very specific ways uh, to unlock certain units, and some units are already available to certain people, which makes it pretty interesting. It means that there will be some diversity. You know, there will be certain units you won't often see, and uh, it'll make them a little bit more special, which I quite like. But of course, if you guys have a unit that you want to get, then this is how you find out how to get it. Ah, see? See? I'm being useful. So, um, thanks Tom Phillips. Thanks. Thanks Tom. So, when fighting to unite China, a good leader must know how to recruit the best units for the task at hand. This blog aims to help you understand the conditions for unlocking units in Total War Three Kingdoms. So, first off, retinues. Total War Three Kingdoms departs from the traditional methods of recruiting found in older titles such as Rome and Warhammer. How dare you? That's brand spanking new. It's really not. It's like, what, two years old now? Jesus. Uh, the first one. God, three? Anyway. So, units are recruited into retinues of up to six units that follow their warlord both on the campaign map and in battle. These units are recruited instantly at low health, requiring several terms to muster to full strength, much like the units in Throne to Britannia. That is a mechanic I really loved, actually. That's something I, I would love to see in Warhammer. Because, yeah, just being able to get the unit straight away I think is great. I think that's a really fun uh, way to do it. And then just replenishment takes over. I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, in addition, units are never uh, truly wiped out. Instead, requiring a number of terms, uh, turns to return to the retinue at low health and time to master again. So, yeah, pretty cool. So, uh, if every single guy here gets killed, it'll just, it'll just regrow. Um, out of that, because that is this person's set retinue, and it'll always try and default to that uh, that template, which I think is pretty cool. I think it's a nice way of doing it. So, um, yeah, but if the Warlord dies, their retinue disbands entirely, because, of course, the retinue is attached to the Warlord. Makes sense. So, these retinues will follow their Warlord wherever they go, even across factions, which is interesting, which is an interesting approach. Kind of cool, because, of course, you know, none of your generals are specific to your faction. You know, if you sack one or whatever, um, then yeah, or one gets captured, they might recruit one. It's uh, it's in flux, which is kind of cool. So, adding extra value to the talented individuals wandering China, seeking a new master. But how do they recruit these units to their retinue? Good point. So, universal units. Firstly, every member of the Han court has access to the basic militia units, regardless of class and level. These are the bread and butter of your forces at the start of the campaign, and are still valuable in a pinch later on. So for that, it's it's the militia units. You know, the G militia, the archer militia, the saber militia, the mounted lancer militia, and the mounted saber militia, which is actually a nice range of stuff that just anyone can recruit from straight away, because, you know, you've got your anti-large, you've got your shock cav, you've got your melee cav, you've got your archers, and you've got some swordsmen. So it's a good mix, which uh, I really appreciate, just being able to go, right, here's a well-rounded army from the beginning of the game. Because that can often be a real pain in other titles where you just don't have access to a well-rounded army early on. Um, I mean, look at every Empire campaign in Warhammer where you just have an army almost entirely of swordsmen at the start of the game. And no cavalry or archers to speak of. Uh, well, I guess you can get crossbowmen fairly soon and free company militia, but still, it, yeah, it's not very well-rounded. So that's kind of cool. That is very nice to see. So, class-specific units. These characters can also recruit more competent troops depending on their class and rank. For example, a vanguard can recruit all the previously available militias as well as the raider cavalry unit. Some classes have access to additional units as they rank up. For example, when a champion hits rank 6, they can recruit um, both spear guard and heavy spear guard. So, let's take a look. Right, so, available to the class of strategist, you can get the trebuchet, you can get a freaking trebuchet. How cool is that? But only as the strategist. Which, uh, I, I think this is a nice way to do recruitment, just generally. It makes... It kind of means you can't just rely on all of the, all of the, um, sort of, uh, generals that are going to be best at dueling. You know, there's reason to get a diverse range of, uh, characters and retinues, which is really cool. So, trebuchet, crossbowman, and heavy crossbowman once at rank 6. For the champion, they can get spear guard and heavy spear guard. For the Commander, Vanguard and Sentinel, Commander can get uh, Jean Swordguard Cavalry, the Vanguard can get Raider Cavalry, and the Sentinel can get uh, Jean Swordguard. And the Commander can get... Uh, hang on. That's Jean Swordguard Cavalry, and that's... Jean Swordguard Cavalry. Is it me or is this the same thing twice? This feels like the same thing twice to me. 
Okay, moving on. Okay, that's that. So, um, yeah, so that's interesting. The classes do uh, differentiate a bit. I really like that. That makes it interesting. And uh, then there's faction-specific units. So there is some variety in factions, which is something that a lot of people were worried about. They'd be like, oh, they're all just Chinese things. It's like, yeah, there's still, there's still a range of stuff, which is cool. So some units can also be recruited into the retinue of a character serving a specific faction leader. For example, generals under Cao Cao will be able to recruit Tiger and Leopard Cavalry once they hit rank 3, and hev the Heavy variant at rank 6. So, let's have a look here. Dong Zhou, he can get the uh, uh, Ziliang, Ziliang, Xiliang, Xi, uh, Xi, Xiliang, Xiliang, Xiliang Cavalry. Still working on my Chinese guys, still working on it. Um, so, Xiliang Cavalry and the Heavy Xiliang Cavalry. Also, Cao Cao can get the Tiger and Leopard Cavalry and the Heavy Tiger and Leopard Cavalry, which uh, look pretty damn cool. Uh, Gongun San can get the White Horse Fellows and the White Horse Raiders. So these are uh, really elite um, cavalry archers, which... Uh, pretty unique, because I don't think there are a lot of cavalry archers in this game, so that's that's pretty unique to them. Um, also, uh, San Juan can get uh, the mercenary infantry, he can get mercenary archers and mercenary cavalry. He's big on mercenaries, that guy. I think he gets them for cheaper upkeep as well, I think. I think they're cheaper to him as well, um, but uh, don't don't quote me on that. Um, also, uh, Ma Tang can get uh, Kyung Raiders, uh, sorry, Kwang Marauders, Kyung Hunters, and yeah, and Kyung Raiders, my bad. So yeah, bit more Archer Cav, which is interesting to see, but look like a hybrid Cav. They've got the Glaives there as well, so they might be good Shock Cav as well as Archers, which is uh, definitely interesting. And then uh, Xiang Yan can get the Black Mountain Marauders, the Black Mountain Outlaws, and the Black Mountain Hunters. So again, a good range of stuff for each of them, you know, although they're themed, it's all Black Mountain stuff. You've got your Axe uh, 2 you know, axes here, the dual axe uh, unit, so good damage dealers. You got your anti large here, and supposedly elite archers, but they do have an axe as well that is being shown off a bit, so maybe they're quite good in melee too, who knows? Uh, but they are elite, so, you know, Kong Rong here gets the Fury of Beihai, and uh, the Thunder of Jian An, which, again, pretty damn cool. Gets some crossbowmen, unique to him. And Liu Biao. Gets the infantry of Jing and the Imperial Defenders. So just very, very decent spear units. Very sturdy. Uh, Yon Xiao gets the Warriors of Yi and the Defenders of Haibai. Of he Heibai? Heibai? Hebai. I think it's Hebai. Hebai? Anyway, like I said, guys, still working on the Chinese. So, uh, yeah, some good uh, polearm units here. Interesting. Uh, Yan Shu gets the Rapid Tiger Infantry and the Warriors of the Left. Not the Warriors of the Right, no, that's at a higher rank. Um, I kid. Anyway. Uh, Zhang Yang. Zhang. Zhang Jiang. Zhang Jiang. Something like that. Um, hidden Axes. So, Hidden Axes and the Fists of the Bandit Queen. So, pretty cool. You can see they do have bows as well. So, uh, bow, axe, caval uh, bow, axe units, which is pretty cool. Uh, they don't shoot their axes, you know, they, they're archers. They're hybrid infantry is what I'm getting at. So, pretty cool to see that too. Also, Liu Bei, he gets Yi Archers and Yi Marksmen, so more elite archers. Uh, and then Dong Zhou again. So, yeah, big variety of uh, specific stuff, which is pretty cool. So, units available through reforms. That's right, we're not even done yet. There are a lot of more elite stuff that you just unlock through the tech tree. So, a studious warlord can also uncover new units through the reform tree, with the powerful dragon units being available to recruit into the retinue of any serving general once the reform has been completed. So here you can see we get the uh, uh, swiftness is the key in war. I think that could be the reform you have to buy to get these mounted archers. So I guess anyone can get them, but you've got to get through tech. Um, also, through the Mandate of Heaven, you get the Yellow Dragons. Uh, through the... Uh, this is very small for me, by the way. Um, hierarchical... Enfofments? I can barely see that. Anyway, you get Jade Dragons there. You also get the Pearl Dragons, the Onyx Dragons, and the Azure Dragons. So yeah, a lot of a lot of dragons. A lot of dragon units, but uh, presumably all very, very capable. Not sure what the Pearl Dragons and the Azure Dragons differ with. They look more heavily armoured, so not sure, really. Because yeah, two similar looking 
uses for these two. So maybe these are just heavy armor and these are better at doing damage? Not sure. I'll have to find out. Maybe they're just a lot quicker on their feet. Who knows? So uh, also available through uh, tech that is class specific. That's right. There are even more. There are a lot of units in this game, guys. So through the Office of Arts and Crafts, which just sounds adorable. Sounds adorable that. Uh, you get Saber Infantry. Through the uh, Slave Mobilization, you get the Axe Band. This is all for the Sentinel. For the Vanguard, they get access to Lance Cavalry and Peasant Raiders. The Strategist gets access to Archers, Repeater Crossbowmen, and Heavy Repeater Crossbowmen. And the Commander gets access to the Saber Cavalry. Very cool. Oh wow, and Champion too. They get the Peasant Band, the Spear Warriors, the G Infantry, and the Heavy G Infantry. And uh, then back to the Sentinel. So yeah, plenty of stuff to go around. Also, <laughs> what I think makes being Emperor a little bit more special is uh, finally for those Warlords with the power or audacity to declare themselves Emperor can unlock the formidable Defenders of Earth and Protectors of Heaven, which are probably two of the coolest names for units ever. I think we can all agree on that. That is damn cool. So, uh, yeah, some extra elite units there. And they both look very heavily armoured, both very well equipped, but I mean, they're the Emperor's finest, so you'd assume so. So, very cool stuff. So, summary. For example, if you're a Sentinel serving Liu Bei, and he had declared himself Emperor of Shu Han, and also research tool distribution and mandate of heaven, you could recruit Qi Militia, Archer Militia, Saber Militia, Mounted Lancer Militia, Mounted Saber Militia, Xi'an Sword Guard, Yi Archer, Yi Marksman, Yellow Dragons, Protectors of Heaven, and Defenders of Earth. Which is a lot of stuff, but of course, you read news, there's only gonna be six guys. You can only recruit you know, you can only get six um, units per retinue. So um, yeah, you're gonna have to make sure to split them up between your armies, make sure you got the right right combinations going. So, a threatening retinue indeed, but the retinue itself is but the start. A character's traits, ancillaries, and skills can all contribute to the effectiveness of every unit in their retinue, giving them new formations, battle side abilities, such as vanguard deployment, called guerrilla deployment in, uh, in 3k. Oh, Tom Phillips. Come on, man. <laughs> Easy mistake to make. And stat modifiers. So yeah, cool stuff. Very cool stuff. Big range of units. Which, um, yeah, I think uh, that allays a lot of fears for me. Um, I knew there'd be a lot of a lot of stuff in it, but I was worried about diversity. But there's a good a good variety here, which I think will keep things fresh and interesting. Which uh, is exactly exactly what you want, um, especially because a lot of the lords they well every single um, general that you can start as they all have very specific things to them, um, not just in units but how they play. So yeah, I'm hoping to play a heck of a lot of campaigns before I get bored of this title. It's very interesting. Yeah, I'm very excited for it, guys. You might be able to tell. The excitement is uh, definitely looming. So, guys, if you enjoyed this, uh, be sure to stay tuned for more news and uh, 3K content. So, yeah, to do that, remember to comment, like, and subscribe. Really, you just have to subscribe, but if you like it, that's good for me. And if you comment, um, I can answer any questions um, that I may know the answers to. Who knows? So uh, hopefully I'll see you in the comment section. Don't be a stranger. So yeah, I guess I'll see you in the next one, guys. Have a good one.